An hour left on our shift. Friday. Slow day so far. Only two calls. So they put us out on traffic duty. Grace was looking down at her phone in the passenger seat. I was watching the cars drive by, nestled in a hidden driveway surrounded by tall trees. 35, 36, 34, 35, 35, 40, 40, was, was it worth it? Eh, 39, 37, 20. Hey, come on, buddy. Can you keep up with the flow of traffic? Weird. I peeked my head forward a little bit. Colorado plates. Bet that's why they slowed down so much. Grace? Huh? We got a white Subaru with Colorado plates going 15 under the speed limit. Looks like a rental. <sighs> Alrighty. Let's go. <laughs> Timothy Filciotti presents Rivers of the Mind Season 2.5 Starring Michelle Pearl as Grace Timmy Filciotti as Philip Colin Estes as Dusty Aaron Mayfield as The Chief from the great state of Colorado out here. Please stand by. You want to get it or me? I can do it. Anything to get out of that goddamn car. Being around Philip was different since that night with the field, and I don't blame him or think less of him for it, but if he was in a bad mood, then it was hard not to get sucked in. Hanging around this dusty character was making him worse, rubbing off on him. You couldn't talk to him for 15 minutes without hearing about how the... How the deep state was was putting fluoride in our water, or how there were hidden cameras in the woods outside of his house. And I went up to the side of the car. The fellow driving had long brown hair, blue eyes, sort of a stubbly face. His girlfriend looked Hispanic or something. Couldn't really tell. He rolled down his window. Good afternoon, officer. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, mein Herr? Ja. Meine Frau und ich sind hier im Urlaub. Sie sprechen gut Deutsch. Wo haben Sie gelernt? I could hear Grace talking in muffled German through the window. She asked them a few questions before the man stepped out and led her to the back so she could look through the trunk. She glanced back at me, raising her eyebrows. The two didn't have anything but some luggage. It's from the same town as my husband, Rosenheim. What are the chances? Well, probably pretty slim, I'd imagine, right? Yep. Small world. Wife was from Italy, I guess. Visited family in Denver and came out to see the hill country. He kept getting pulled over for speeding, so he was trying to go slower. Right. Well, makes sense, I guess. I shrugged and drove us back to the speed trap. Forty-five more minutes and we could leave. I was anxious to get the hell out of there had to meet up with Dusty after he got off work. We pulled back into our spot, and I resumed taking readings of the passing cars. 35, 36, 34, 33, 35. So tomorrow, I guess, is the big day, huh? Yep, sure is. You got your, uh, your Nike sneakers ready? Oh, come on, Grace, it's not like that. I need to get so defensive. I'm not getting defensive. Just... We're going to three box for this one. I'm supposed to pick up the Kool-Aid and Dusty's bringing along the rat poison. Right. You really think something's gonna happen? I'm not sure. But Dusty seems pretty convinced. He does. Maybe he's onto something. Then again, maybe he's just skipped one too many doses of his medication. I don't know about that, Grace. He seems like a pretty level-headed fellow to me. 
I asked him what he thought of the weather and he ranted for half an hour about the United Nations, FEMA camps, and secret alien bases under the Gulf of Mexico. Well, he's just a very serious-minded person. You'll see tomorrow. You're, uh, you're still coming to tag along, right? Well, something's sure as hell going on there, and no one else is looking into it, so, yeah, I'll be there. It's just gonna depend, uh... Tanner's got a soccer game tomorrow, so I'll have to be there either in the morning or the afternoon, but I'll be there. Yeah, gotta put family first, that's for sure. Yeah. You, uh, you talk to Kurt about this? Don't know how. But he's probably going to be doing homework over at that, uh, Isabel girl's house. Homework, huh? <laughs> yep, that's what he keeps saying. This is Isabel Grove, right? Same Isabel Grove we arrested for shoplifting five years ago. Her dad works at that scrap metal yard, doesn't he? Yep, she's the one. Uh, she's not gotten into trouble much more since then. Guess she's in some kind of a computer club now or something. Whenever I see her, she tries to sell me these, uh, um, these bite coins or something like that. It's some kind of a computer money Kurt's always talking about. As long as it's keeping them out of trouble and away from drugs, it's fine with me. Right. Right. So, what... Do you think they're fixing to date, or...? Oh, they probably are, just haven't gotten around to telling me yet. The truth of it was, I hadn't talked all that much to Kurt. Didn't know what was going on with him. He'd just get home, he'd shut himself in his room, and play his computer games since I caught him smoking pot. Wasn't sure what to do. At least he was less angry at me than he was at his mom. Hardly talked to her, neither did I. Tried changing the subject. This old speed trap sure ain't what it used to be, huh? Everyone and their brother knows about it. <sighs> Guess we should probably head back to the station soon, huh? Suppose we could. I think rush hour is just about petered out anyway. The two of us pulled out of the speed trap and sped on down the highway, back to the station. It was a sleepy day there, too. Same guy who'd been sleeping off a hangover in one of our three holding cells that morning was now clutching his head and staring down at his bruised hands. Marcia, the lady at the front desk, briefly looked up from a copy of People magazine and waved at us with a smile. I waved back at her, even though Marcia was a catty bitch who seemed to think this was a goddamn high school cafeteria and not a police station. We lost the normal front desk person, Laura, last year when she finished her CNA license and went back to work at the nursing home. Now she was a good receptionist. I don't know who the fuck decided to hire Marcia. Right as Philip was leaving, someone tapped me on the shoulder. Grace, you, you mind if I have a word with you? I heard the chief ask in a polite business-like voice. Philip looked back over his shoulder suspiciously. See you tomorrow. Yep, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, you folks got plans for the weekend? Kids got a soccer game. We're all gonna grab some dinner afterwards. Tanner really looks up to Philip. Ain't that sweet. Actually, I was hoping to chat with you about Philip for a moment. Oh. All right. What's going on? Well, I know he's had a hard time lately. He had that little incident where you were thinking someone drugged him. And since then, he's been a little, well, just ain't been himself lately. Seems a little on edge. He's been depressed. Doctor has him on some new medication is all, as far as I know. Seems like he's been awfully interested in these, um angel sightings around town. Sure, but I think most folks are, huh? Interested, sure, but don't think it really warrants serious investigation, do you? Serious investigation? Uh, no. No, that's not what I He's meant. He's not been looking into any of this on his own, has he? Well, on the day of the, all those sightings came in, we did go around to double-check some of the stories. He was thinking it might be some kind of organized prank or something. Right. I was wondering about that. So are you all, I don't know, 
planning on filling out a report of some kind about that? Well, of course. He's just been trying to to narrow down a description of some kind, you know? Hmm. Interesting. You know, this is the kind of thing I'd like to hear about. Not sure why y'all didn't keep me posted on it. I'm sorry, sir. That's no, fine. I understand. Well, thanks for letting me know. When you find the time to write the report, I'd love to see right. it. Right. We'll have it on your desk as Good. soon as we can. And, well, I hope you don't mind me asking. Uh, notice that you'd, um, pulled some old case records. Mind telling me about that? Well, I was curious about the the data collection facility, you know? They took us down and debriefed us, but... I see. Now, I understand your curiosity here, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way, since you two are some of the finest officers we have, but... I'd strongly recommend keeping your curiosity about that old base to a minimum. You understand? It's a very sensitive installation. Right. It's just... Well, there was a case I came across in the files. A girl named Marianne. Guess she disappeared from a bar in San Antonio. Someone saw her mouthing for help from a car in town. Case closed pretty abruptly. It just stood out to me. <clears throat> no one followed up on that evidence. The chief, caught off guard, frowned faintly, but tried his best to withhold any emotion. I continued. Cold cases like that always stick out to me, especially when there was evidence no one bothered looking into. I wasn't sure why I'd come across it looking for information about the base, either, but there's no statute of limitations for murder in the state of Texas. I understand. You bet your ass I understand, officer. Back when I was a detective, I spent every night in the cold case files. But just trust me when I say there's certain rabbit holes in those files you don't want to go down. I hadn't seen the chief act this way before. Usually he was amicable, professional, even when upset. Now he looked worse than dusty. Paranoid, conspiratorial. Trust me, Grace. I'm not trying to threaten you. I'm trying to keep you and Philip out of trouble. I see. So I should just forget about it, I guess. That's what I'd advise. Best case scenario, all you do is end yourself in a goddamn bureaucratic nightmare. Just between you and me, alright? That place wasn't always a data collection facility. Back in the day, well, even I'm not sure. I just know that when I when I started looking into it back in the 70s, I had government agents showing up at my door in the middle of the night warning me to stop. And I know that sounds crazy. I'm just saying, Grace, something, I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry to be so frank. I shouldn't have told you any of this. I started to leave before I noticed that uh, that pretty new receptionist had a nice painting in the background on her desktop. I, I leaned in to have a closer look, and suddenly it hit me. She had on this perfume that smelled absolutely heavenly. These red painted nails and curled brown hair. I recognized the painting. I'm sorry to bother you, miss. Uh, is that Camille Pissarro on your desktop? She set the magazine down and looked over her shoulder, smiling. Holy goddamn, that smile. She had her lipstick on just perfectly, her faint brown eyes sparkling in the light. I didn't peg you as a fan of French Impressionism. <clears throat> I didn't peg you as an art history type either. That's the banks of the Louis near Pontois, ain't it? Impressive. We had the original at the museum where I did my internship before I came here. Where was that? Indianapolis. Now how in the hell do you go from one of the biggest art museums in the country to the front desk for a police department in the middle of Texas? I find myself asking the same question every day. I guess it's not what I had in mind when I got my master's in art history, but here we are. Well, uh, we're all glad to have you here. We've got a lot of problems with the art forgery, you know, in this area. Oh, do you? Yeah, just just the other day I had to 
to bust up a gang of ruffians trying to sell a forged copy of the port at Morgat by Radone for a dime bag of meth. I'm surprised they didn't call me in. <laughs> you know, I've been dying to find someone I could talk to about this stuff. Well, it's not every day you run into someone who even knows who Camille Pissarro is around here. We should... Remember your sensitivity training, Philip. For the love of God, remember your sensitivity training. We should chat more often. Well, if you're free this weekend, we could grab some coffee. Oh, uh, coffee? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to grab some coffee. Uh, some coffee? I, 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 got a, I got a thing going on tomorrow. <clears throat> maybe maybe, a, maybe Sunday morning around 8 o'clock if you're free. How's 8.30? Sounds like a plan. You ever been to a place called Java Ranch? It's right by my house. Can't say I I have, but I'll, I'll look it up and I'll meet you there. All right, I'll put it on my calendar. Philip, that's your name, right? Sorry, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> yep, that that's what they call me. I'll, I'll see you then. I, I should probably, uh, probably get home, but nice talking to you. Sure. See you on Sunday. A person. I talked to a human being. I had a conversation with a man about something other than a truck, a gun, or football for the first time in a year and a half. It's a miracle. I tried not to look too excited to have a friend. I didn't want to seem like, I don't know, I was desperately lonely or anything. I wasn't. No, of course I wasn't. I wasn't weird. I had not spent the last week obsessing over an alien conspiracy theory alone in my apartment. I was a perfectly normal woman. I had perfectly normal interests. I took a deep breath and looked back at the magazine. Good work, Marcia. You have a friend, a work friend. Now don't screw it up. The door to the right of me opened and Grace came out. I stiffened up my back and tried to look as normal as I could. I smiled up at her. She sort of scowled back. I could never read her. I couldn't read most of the people here. Was she angry? Did I have something on my face? Have a good weekend. You too. She smiled briefly and paused. Was she waiting for me to say something? I should say something, right? That's what a receptionist does. Got any plans? Just spending time with family. You know, there's a story going around online. There's supposed to be some kind of UFO landing or something. Do receptionists talk about things like that? Didn't hear about that one. Was that in the news or... Some uh, blogger took a video of this alien earlier this week. Pretty funny, huh? That's funny. This is a funny thing. The thing that I am talking about. Right? She wasn't laughing. It was... It was not a funny thing. Right. I sound like I think it's real. Okay. People sure are crazy, I said, hoping to insinuate that. Yes, I believe that people were crazy. She rolled her eyes. Sure are. You get a lot of crackpots around here. Well, I'll see you later. Have a good day. It's not day. It's night. Night. I started to pack up my stuff. 8.30 a.m. on Sunday. Coffee. Work friend. Work friend equals Philip. Cool. Great. I waited by my car in a mostly empty parking lot in the next town over. It was almost night time and the air felt heavy and cold. Dust pulled up in his truck, his face anxious, and he stepped out of the car. He mouthed something to himself in frustration, and, and then he got out, striding across the parking lot. Do you have the documents? Fascinating. Now don't you tell anyone I got those to you, okay? You could really get me suspended. Of course not. I can keep a secret. Here, look at this here. Her friends reported that she'd been seen leaving the bar with a man, uh, described as a six-foot-tall Caucasian male with dark brown hair. That matches the description of the last case almost perfectly. It sure does. Jesus Christ, who knows what they did to her. Last seen in Fredericksburg, Texas, at an intersection... Mouthed the words, help me, to a Miss Molly Perkins while she was out walking her dog. Police never found a body. Hmm. What do you think? I, uh... Well, it's, it's too soon to say for sure. I'll need to cross-reference it with the other documents. If I start printing just anything, I'll lose my credibility. But 
Thank you. Thank you for listening to Rivers of the Mind Season 2.5, Episode 1. Rivers of the Mind is written and produced by Timmy Vilgiotti, who also plays the role of Philip. This episode you just heard featured the vocal talents of Michelle Pearl, playing the part of Grace, the German man, and Marsha, Aaron Mayfield playing the part of the chief, and Colin Estes playing the part of Dusty. If you'd like to help support the hosting of Rivers of the Mind, you can go on to patreon.com slash We'd like to keep that up about $15 a month. Um, and then if anything else comes through, we'll use that to buy cups of coffee for actors when they come by. We will do some cool sound effect stuff. We might get some, we might get a recorder don't know if I should have mentioned the recorder. I think that's kind of more of a threat than a promise that I'm going to buy a recorder. But um, I might. I might. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got. Oh yeah, and tell your friends, you know, if you like the show. Tell your friends. And if you liked the show, leave us a review. If you didn't like the show, I'd also appreciate a review. So just any reviews you leave us in iTunes or whatever platform are great, and you can also just send them to me. Well, with all of that said, and all of the rambling that I normally do at the beginning crammed into the end of the episode, thank you. Have a great day. I am going to go watch The Handmaid's Tale.